Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, here's yet another How to Keep Your Heart Rate at Maximum Between Races episode with our dear friends at McLaren and their infamous switch-off feature. Because, you know, who needs constant performance in Formula One anyway? Ever wondered why McLaren's F1 cars decide to take a quick nap in between races? Is it a power-saving mode for the cars? So grab your popcorn and get ready for another thrilling episode. The McLaren MCL36 is the car that the McLaren Formula 1 team is competing in the F1 season. Developed under new technical regulations, the MCL36 features drastically changed aerodynamics including larger 18-inch wheels and simplified front and rear wings. Powered by a Mercedes F1 M13e performance engine, the MCL36 has a tightly packaged rear end to maximize aerodynamic performance. In preseason testing, the car showed promise with decent speed and reliability. After achieving their first win since 2012 last season, hopes were high for McLaren coming into 2022. However, the MCL36 has generally disappointed so far, lacking the straight line speed of top cars like Red Bull and Ferrari. Development challenges and proposing issues have hampered performance. Nonetheless, there have been some strong results, including Norris securing McLaren's first podium of 2022 at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. For the remainder of the season, McLaren will be pushing hard to understand and optimize the MCL 36 to fight for more race wins. The 2022 Formula One season ended with the McLaren MCL 36 established as arguably the second fastest car on the grid. However, a disastrous weekend at the debut Las Vegas Grand Prix exposed an aerodynamic phenomenon that McLaren has struggled to overcome. An inability to maintain performance in low downforce trim. This previously hidden weakness raises doubts that McLaren can realistically challenge at the front across an entire season. Has McLaren solved its low downforce struggles in time to fight for the 2023 championship? Or will this nagging inconsistency hamper its title ambitions? In isolation, McLaren's dreadful Las Vegas Grand Prix could be dismissed as an anomaly. The team bungled tire strategy in qualifying to see both cars knocked out in Q1. Lando Norris then crashed heavily on cold tires on the opening lap. Later in the race, Oscar Piastri's valiant fightback was ruined by a late pit stop to avoid disqualification on fuel regulations. Individually, none of these issues stemmed from any weakness in the MCL36 design itself. Yet, even if everything went smoothly, McLaren was never on pace to match its recent front-running speed. The low downforce Las Vegas circuit configuration highlighted a specific condition where McLaren struggles to dial in competitiveness. McLaren admits its 2023 Challenger sees an aerodynamic switch-off when running maximum low-drag configurations. The car loses performance by a greater degree than rivals when utilizing skinny rear wings and other drag-reducing measures. This characteristic plagued them in the low downforce races at Monza, Spa, Franker Champs, and most recently Las Vegas. Technical Director Andrea Stella confirms the overall car efficiency drops more severely for McLaren at lower downforce levels team loses out on cornering performance by having to trim more wing angles to find speed on long straights. This trade-off means McLaren cannot match the straight-line speed gains of Red Bull and other rivals utilizing extremely low drag setups. In basic terms, reducing the rear wing angle should decrease rear downforce and drag in equal measure. But Formula One aerodynamics proves far more complex. The front and rear wings interact, so lowering the rear wing angle upsets car balance. The front wing also loses some of its control over guiding airflow around the car. This changes the overall behavior that engineers must recalibrate. Additionally, the modern 2023 regulations intended to simplify previously complex aerodynamic components. One byproduct made managing drag-inducing vortices more difficult. The intricate rear wing end plates once prevalent offered significant control over drag and downforce levels. Without these devices, dialing in an efficient low drag configuration turns more challenging. McLaren chose early on to focus its in-season development on adding downforce at medium to high speed levels. This paid dividends with vastly improved performance after the first major upgrade introduced from the Austrian Grand Prix onward. However, they failed to dedicate similar efforts towards maximizing low drag configurations. The consequence was clear struggles on those weekends requiring low downforce wings, notably Spa, Monza and Las Vegas. Recognizing those events as a minority of the schedule, McLaren felt comfortable sacrificing outright competitiveness for just a handful of races. But with more venues like Baku and Las Vegas now demanding low drag efficiency, 
they can no longer afford that tunnel vision development path. Does McLaren risk leaving championships on the table by failing to master low drag configurations? Or can they selectively prioritize high downforce tracks and still fight for titles? An interesting contrast emerges in analyzing Williams, arguably the grid's lowest downforce car. Logic says Williams should struggle most on high downforce tracks as they cannot generate equivalent loads aerodynamically at lower wings. Data confirms that deficiency at venues like Spain, Hungary, and Qatar. Yet whenever the calendar shifts to lower downforce demands, Williams gains momentum. At Monza and Las Vegas, for example, the car performed far stronger than its established baseline at most events. The team's analysis suggests the FW45 finds better relative aerodynamic efficiency at the lower rear wing angle it runs. The reason behind this characteristic remains unclear. Head of Vehicle Performance Dave Robson believes Williams' design methodologies for its rear wing and broader aerodynamic concept likely play a role. Just as Williams aims to unlock the secrets of its low drag prowess, McLaren must make this phenomenon a priority to cure. Despite bringing in new rear wing flap to Las Vegas, the team ran their Monza specification beam wing rather than an even skinnier option. This hints that the limitations around maximizing straight line speed remain. To challenge Red Bull and Ferrari, McLaren requires a more versatile aerodynamic platform. Will a failure to maximize the benefits of a Mercedes power unit leave McLaren still unable to compete with the dominant forces of Red Bull and Ferrari? If McLaren fails to cure its low drag deficiencies, the additional Mercedes engine power risks getting wasted. Lacking efficiency in skinny rear wing configuration means McLaren may still fall short of top speeds to defend and attack long straights. Without that potency combined with improved mechanical grip, they cannot hope to take the fight to Red Bull and Ferrari over a full season. As budget caps limit development opportunities, can McLaren realistically address both low speed and low drag weaknesses in time for 2024? The restricted budgets inherent to Formula One's financial regulations put intense pressure on development priorities. With glaring deficiencies in both low speed corner traction and low drag configurations, McLaren may lack the resources to fully optimize both areas. If forced to choose one weakness to mitigate versus the other, low drag solutions seem the wiser path to pursue championship aspirations. Does the 2024 regulation stability play into McLaren's hands to iterate existing designs rather than reinventing radical concepts? Thanks to mostly stable technical regulations, McLaren can devote focus to sharpening existing design concepts rather than having to relearn core aerodynamic behaviors, as in past years. This iteration should allow more rapid analysis and development provided they commit resources to the critical low-drag solutions. Familiarity with the engineering direction breeds refinement. McLaren remains adamant that intentionally sacrificing performance at a handful of events proved worthwhile to transform general competitiveness. But with sturdier budget caps restricting development, no team can afford glaring weak spots. Just as McLaren vows to resolve mechanical deficiencies harming slow corner traction, mastering low drag configurations must take similar priority. Otherwise, even with a powerful Mercedes engine arriving in 2024, they risk leaving race victories and championship ambitions stranded in their dirty air. And that, folks, wraps up our electrifying journey into the mysterious world of McLaren's F1 cars and their peculiar switch-off mode. Will we ever decode the reason behind this unconventional pit stop strategy? Probably not, but hey, the intrigue is half the fun. If you've enjoyed this roller coaster of confusion and amusement, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell because you never know when McLaren decides to throw another curveball in the racing world. Will they finally reveal the mystical secrets behind the Switch Off Sega? Stay tuned to find out, and we welcome your thoughts on the matter in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.